So the conclusion to all this is that ending prohibition is really, really the uh, solution to many of these drug problems. I think it's the only solution. And, and if people just think seriously about what prohibition means, you know, uh, the drug warriors would tell you prohibition means we're controlling drugs. Well, it's exactly the opposite. It is total lack of control of drugs. The people that control it when you prohibit it are, are the criminals. What happens when you prohibit a drug, any drug, the first thing that happens is you create an underground market for that drug that's instantly filled with criminals. And now because that drug is dangerous to supply because it's illegal, you know, you can go to jail for life, you can get killed by cops or other drug dealers, because of the danger itself, it creates an artificially inflated value for these drugs that is so huge that between where they're grown mainly in developing countries like Colombia or Afghanistan, where they're sold in, in Europe or the United States, that value can increase by more than 17,000 percent. Think of what a obscene profit motive that is. The only way to end this is to do away with that profit motive. See, I learned very early on out there living on the streets with those folks for 14 years I was out there, that if a uniform cop arrests somebody in your neighborhood for, say, robbery or for rape, the number of robberies, the number of rapes goes down, right? You got the guy. But when I arrested somebody for selling drugs, the number of drug sales didn't change at all. I was simply creating a job opening for hundreds of people more than willing to take the risk for this obscene profit motive. That's why marijuana, marijuana is a weed, it'll grow anywhere in the world. It's useless, it's worthless, as long as it's legal. But once you prohibit it, marijuana is worth more gram per gram than gold. It's a weed. Heroin from another weed, from an opium poppy, which will grow anywhere in the world, is practically useless, is worth more than plutonium. Heroin is probably the most expensive commodity on the face of the earth. But if we legalized it, those prices would fall down to nothing. It wouldn't even be worth it for people to sell on the streets. Where does all this money go now? $500 billion a year is spent on illegal drugs around the world every year. That money goes mainly into the pockets of drug lords, terrorists, and when I say terrorists, I really mean terrorists. Osama bin Laden made almost all of his money selling heroin out of, uh, out of uh, Afghanistan in the United States. And then he turned those profits around to try to destroy our society. Uh, if we legalized these drugs today, tomorrow there wouldn't be a terrorist or a, a drug lord in the world that would make a penny. So, so one could say that prohibition is really a security risk. Absolutely it is. Absolutely it is. And it's also a terrible risk for business people. You know, think $500 billion dollars coming in to an individual or a bunch of individuals, they've got to launder that money. How do they launder it? They create phony businesses. Businesses that don't have to make a profit. Construction companies, hotels, restaurants. How can any honest business person possibly compete with those people? It's impossible. So this is also good for them. It's also good for, uh, we could tax it and actually make revenue off this stuff. We, we commissioned a study with uh, Harvard University uh, a year ago uh, with a uh, professor, Jeffrey Myron, and we asked him to do a study that would just show us how much money the United States Treasury would realize if we legalized and regulated all drugs and just taxed them at the level of alcohol or tobacco. And he's a very conservative economist, and he came up with a bare minimum of $76.8 billion dollars a year that the U.S. Treasury would realize. That You're talking a lot of money. That kind of money, with that kind of money, we could, uh, we could offer uh, health care for everyone. You could pay for the whole thing. But instead, we let all that money go to the, to the drug lords who don't have to pay a penny of tax. It's just wrong-headed. So prohibition is a security problem, it's a problem for economy, it's a problem for, well, 
democratic control of the economy. And it's certainly a problem for those 1.9 million people that we arrest in the United States every single year for nonviolent drug offenses. Think about what that number is. What do you got? 5.3 million people here in this country? In three years, we arrest more people in the United States for nonviolent drug offenses than you have in your entire country. Think of how much harm we're doing to people. And when you arrest somebody and imprison them, uh, and, and we imprison more people than any country in the world, far more. Uh, when you do that, they come out, they have no education, they have no chance of getting a job. The only place they can turn is right back to the drug culture, the very group we say we're trying to save them from. So every year it gets worse than it was the year before. The more people we arrest, the worse it is the next year. Right. So the cure is actually worse than the original problem. Well, that is what is going yeah. on. When, when you're talking about a war on drugs, the cure is certainly worse than the problem, far worse. We could live with the problem of drug abuse. Nobody at LEAP, by the way, wants to see one additional drug abuser in the world. We spent our entire adult lives, our whole career, working against that. And we haven't changed our mind. We just know that if we legalize and regulate these drugs, we will reduce death, disease, crime, and addiction. What could be better than that? Are you aware of what's going on in Switzerland? Yeah, they have these heroin uh, clinics. Clinics, yeah. Yeah, they set up 23 heroin clinics on a, as a pilot project 15 years ago because they were tired of arresting their children for making the mistake of using heroin. They said, we're going to treat this as a health problem. Heroin users can go in up to three times a day into those clinics and actually inject heroin. They can also take uh, substitute drugs, uh, uh, bufomorphine or uh, uh, methadone, but I'm interested in the ones that take shoot the heroin. Uh, about 20 percent of the people in that project have quit using any drug at all. They haven't had a single overdose death there in 15 years because they're they're shooting up under medical supervision. They're using clean needles because they're using clean needles. AIDS and hepatitis. The per capita rate in Switzerland has now dropped that country to the lowest rate of any country in the world or in in Europe. That's an amazing success. They're they're helping you know defeat these terrible diseases. Crime was cut by 60 percent. The heroin is distributed to the users on a sliding scale, but if you have no money, it's free. So that means a heroin user doesn't have to break into your house at night and steal your television set or something to pay for the drugs. So none of those crimes exist. And because the drugs are effectively free, there's no dopers on the streets where these projects are selling heroin because you can't be free. Who would buy from you, right? Uh, especially when they can get pure government heroin with, with no cutting in and they know what they're taking. So if the Dope dealers aren't on the streets selling it. They're not killing each other, cops or kids. So all the violence is gone. And the biggest thing, even more important than that, there was a study that just uh, was done by the very prestigious British medical journal, The Lancet, that shows that uh, over a 10-year period in the capital of Zurich, there has been an 82% decline in new drug users. 82% less new heroin users. And what they attribute that to is they say, the dope dealers are no longer in the neighborhoods, rubbing shoulders with our young people to convince them to pick up those drugs and become the next statistic. So a year ago, last month, they had a referendum vote in Switzerland and they voted to make this a permanent policy throughout the entire country. And why not? They figured out a way to reduce death, disease, crime, and drug addiction. What could be better? And it's the closest thing we have to legalize drugs in the world.